Hello and welcome back. This is All In Fly Fisherman. Today we'll be continuing our winter tailwater fly tying series. And today we'll be going over probably my favorite midge pattern, the buzzer beater midge, as I like to call it. This is based off the UK buzzard pattern that is often used for still water fishing and is often tied for chrominids and larger midge pupa. I scaled this down to a size 20 and I fished it down to a size 24 and used this specifically for fishing midge pupa in tailwater situations. Uh, when I fish this pattern, I do typically fish it in a size 20, 22, and 24. I do not tie smaller than that because that's just being a masochist. Even tying in a 24 is masochism. Ugh. I will fish this pattern by itself with a 20, 22, and 24 all on one line, depending on how picky fish are being. But typically I fish it above, above a uh, a tractor pattern like uh, my improved zebra midge or a mini leech or something along those lines or eggs. So for this pattern we'll be tying it in size 20. We'll be using black Simplify silk in size 24. Uh, I like to use the black Simplify silk for this pattern because it's really thin and with the amount of materials we're going to be using for this fly it's really important that we do not build up unnecessary thread bulk. Then we have Vivis Body Quill in black. Some Hens Pertagon body material. It's a, kind of like a purplish green tinsel, blue, I love it. We'll also be using some UTC Extra Small Mirage tinsel. UTC gold wire in extra small. And we'll be having some solar res to cure everything up in the end. I like to use solar res bone dry preferably. I find it to be a good solid product and will adhere to the flywall. And lastly, we'll be adding a little CDC tough in white to kind of be our midge pupa gills. So now that we got our vise in the hook, let's get going. When tying this pattern, I typically like to start a little further back than one eye's length because when it comes to the middle of the fly or the thorax of the fly, we're gonna be adding quite a few materials and tying in a few materials. So we don't wanna build up too much in that area. All right, now we're gonna snip off our extra. We're gonna add our wire. I like to tie this in on the side of the hook. You know, I'll be tying it on the side closest to me, which you will not be able to see. But you will be able to see if it doesn't stay on that side of the hook. We'll have uniform touching wraps all the way down. And we're going to take this down a little bit past the bend of the hook. Kind of create a curved body look to it. And with the thin profile of this pattern, it will not really affect any hookups with the fish. Next, we're going to add our body quill here. that back so we're not using too much and we'll wrap this forward and lock all this material in. I am less worried about how this material locks in to be honest. It's fairly thin and I'll let it just wrap around the hook. It doesn't bother me. I'll just make sure to clip off any excess before completing the pattern. Okay. 
Next, before we even start wrapping all that, we're gonna tie in our CDC feather. I like to do it this way just because I wanna get that CDC well locked in. And also, I don't wanna to have to worry about when I clip off the CDC, you usually get a little white showing in the back. And I don't want that to be visible at the end. So by doing this now, I'll be able to taper over the excess feather tufts and not have to worry about that. Tie that in and we'll bring that, we'll tie this pretty close to the front of the fly or the hook eye of the fly but we're going to leave a little space because when we are done gluing everything, we don't want we want to have enough space to be able to kind of lift this material and lock in our tippet when we're eventually tying in. Now, if you've ever seen a midge pattern in a seine, or I mean, just Google midge pupa, and you will see that the midge pupa have these gills kind of in the front and I really like how the CDC imitates that. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip these back now. I usually like to go two to three eye lengths for the length of the CDC. And we're gonna bring this back and lock in right where that CDC is so we can just kind of already start getting that material hidden. I'm going to throw in one hitch to lock in the material and throw it in my bobbin cradle as I tie the rest of the fly. Got this handy new Kimco midge finisher which I am loving how small it is. And I'll use the rotary function Actually, I will not use the rotary flash because I can have this so far back on my hook. I will just wrap this around. And you gotta be careful with the hook because you don't want to tear your body material because it is kind of this thin plastic. It's not the most sturdy material. And as you can see as we get this material wrapped and we're getting these uniform wraps here that this body quill leaves a nice polished finish before even getting the UV res cure and it looks very nice. Stop that right about here. And we're going to lock that up. A couple wraps. Spin that around twice. Lock it again. And give it a snip. Next step, we're going to be taking our tinsel, or not our tinsel, a our. Uh, wire here and wrapping this forward. We're going to try to get some nice uniform wraps all the way up with roughly equal segmentation. I like to keep these fairly close together. Six, seven, yeah eight should be good. I will lock that in there. Next, we're going to take in our hen's body quill material. We're going to take a good inch and a half, two inch section of the material and snip that off. The 
has been one of my go-to flashes lately because I just really like the buggy look of it. It's just, I don't know, that purple, blue, and green. It makes me think of a bug. So. And we're gonna tie that in here on the side of the hook. Do you want to make sure the capture is close to the end of the tinsel as possible? Because trimming out any extra just kind of takes away from the beauty of the fly in the end. Okay, now that we got that locked in, we are going to wrap this around, take it to the other side. And lock it in here. So as you can kind of see, what we're going to try to do is add this side profile of tinsel to the fly. And it's going to look really nice in the end. Now that we've got that locked in, we're going to take our Mirage, extra small tinsel here. And we are going to tie that into the top. Perfect. And we are going to lock that in, getting the ends as close to the head of the fly as possible. So we don't have to make any cuts, and we're going to tie this back. And now we're going to take all three pieces of these tinsel, we're going to wrap forward first, and lock them in the forward position. So first we're going to start with our two ends. I'm going to split that piece of tinsel in the back so we can pull it forward. Kind of wrap them up going from the bottom of the fly to the top. Lock those in. Looking good on both sides. This has a little low, so we'll lift that up a little bit. Then we're gonna pull over our Mirage. We're gonna lock this in up top. Two good wraps. And then we're gonna pull them all back. And... Oh, what happened here? One of our tinsel shifted on this side of the hook that I didn't see. So now I'm going to reposition this back to the side. Okay. Now we're going to take these back and do one good thread locking of all these tinsels. So I can start with two and two because they're easy to grab. And then we're going to grab the last piece of tinsel and lock that back. And then we'll clip them all as close to the head as possible. And then I'm going to reposition this fly to tilt back a little bit. And make sure we got enough space to get our tip it through. And we're gonna finish the tying portion. Get our whip finishes in. Three whips is all you need. Because we're gonna be, we're doing a UV cure. Good 
Again, good sharp scissors are great for cutting this Semperfly silk. And let me get this refocused. And then there you go, you can kind of see how I have this 3D tinsel look around it. And to finish off this fly, we're just going to secure everything with some UV finish. Make sure to get all the extra UV resin off your brush. You don't want a large drop. I typically like to support my hand against my vise with my other hand and just dab the top first, the sides. Building up a nice clear coat. bottom and we are going to cure that and we're gonna do the body Again, brushing off all the extra material you can. Getting that resin in there on both sides. Nice thin layers, so you can still see that ribbing. And give it our final blast of UV light. And there you have it, the buzzer beater midge. This will prevent you from getting any days where you catch no fish. You should always catch a fish with this fly. If not, you're doing something else wrong. <laughs> it's not my fault. All right. You have a good one, folks. Enjoy this pattern. Fill up your box. Fish it well. It's not just for still waters. Enjoy.